This Toastmaster toaster predates not only the home automatic toaster uh, that Toastmaster pioneered, it also predates pre-sliced bread by several years. This machine is a Toastmaster made for hotels and restaurants. Uh, it was patented, uh, last patent date in 1921, and it was based off of a patent by a gentleman named Strite, S-T-R-I-T-E, and in fact that is shown right here, Strite U.S. patent, whoops, hello. So Mr. Strite, having come up with this automatic toaster, uh, organized with the uh, Waters Genter Company of Minneapolis to manufacture and market this to uh, commercial establishments that were in previous times having to employ a toast maker to just stand there and make toast all the time. And this labor-saving machine more than paid for its quite hefty price tag of the time by eliminating the need uh, for an employee to stand there and make toast. In fact, some of these early advertisements, they focus on that. Here's one. Perfect toast made without watching. Uh, the one on the left is a three-slice version of, of my guy here. And the one in the middle is an eight-slice. And then the one on the right, it says it's a four-slice. Well, this would be a four-slice. So I have a feeling this ad predates this machine by a little bit. And they figured out how to make the nice new design into a four slicer so I have a as you can see we're going to be testing this I have a newer ad here and here's our four slice Toastmaster 200 slices per hour maximum 2750 watts and $100 which in the mid 1920s would be the equivalent of $1600 today for a four slice toaster. Yes, we are a long way away from the times when you can walk into Target and eighteen dollars later you can have yourself a four slice toaster. Oh no. Not only was this a new invention with a current patent that you know was paying the patent holder or the, the inventor royalties, it was also quite a well built machine. This uses a um, clockwork motor in it. All the parts can be taken out and cleaned and replaced and um, this uh, this timer so you well let's flip it over first let's not test it until we've taken a closer look so I'm missing the crumb tray sadly but that does give us the ability to look inside the thing and see those old asbestos covered wires and open wire connections it's just <laughs> it's just a delightful safe kitchen appliance for your youngsters to use <laughs> um, and as I mentioned 2750 watts so this would have really needed to be fused at 30 amps and that big 8 slice monster that needed a 50 amp fuse or more uh, you've got a little switch on each side which can turn off and on this bank of elements on this side and this bank of elements on this side so if you turn both these switches off then you're only making toast in the middle here and uh, these mica panels on the sides and the back I'm sure they were much more see-through when they were new but this being a hundred year old piece of restaurant equipment uh, you what we got is what we got and that's why I didn't go crazy with polishing it First of all, I wanted to get it assembled and off my workbench where it has sat forlornly for the last year uh, or more. But I also uh, realized that it's just, I'm not going to get it perfect. So I just thought I'd stop when it's in a lot better shape than it was. So anyway, about the mechanism, I mentioned this uses a clockwork motor, uh, spring driven. And this little lever allows you to select from lightest toast to darkest toast with all these different little settings and all that does is limit how far down you can push the timer so no electrical connection has been made but you can hear that ticking away in there that clock spring had broken at the end so I had to repair it heat it up fold it over and, and uh, re-rivet it 
And then this lever uh, not only lowers the, the toast guides, it also engages a big set of carbon contacts, which you can see right there, just within, you know, toddler finger reach. Once again, this was a commercial appliance, and this was made at a time when people knew what to keep your hands away from. So as I close, well, let's put toast in. They did have a version of this, I presume, with wider slots that was a sandwich toaster. And so as I lower this, you saw that little spark there as those carbon contacts closed. And we are making toast. Of course, we activated this partway through, so it would be pretty light toast. And I put an ammeter on this, it really does draw over 2,000 watts. I'm just not happy unless I'm dimming the lights to make breakfast, you know. And our toast is... Well, just barely toasty, but you saw that little spark as the as the contacts opened up, but it it works. It's working. And because there are very few of these out there in the wild, I thought I'd take this opportunity to share this with you. So hopefully you found my my Frankenstein Lab 1920s toaster interesting, and I thank you for watching.